Hey Flutter devs, welcome to Block Mistakes, where we fix the common Flutter issues one clean line at a time. Mistake number one, putting logic in UI. Let's see why that's a problem. In this code, the UI calculates the total by looping over card items. This technically works, but it breaks a golden rule. Your UI should never handle business logic. The question is why? Because now the widget is doing more than just displaying data. It's thinking and it's not its job. Basically, the fix here is just move the logic into your block. Calculate the total when the state is emitted and pass it along. So instead of doing math in your widget, you do it like this. And now in the UI, all you need just displaying data like this. So it's a clean and simple and testable. Why it matters? When logic lives in the block, your app become easier to test, easier to scale and easier to understand. The UI stays dumb, just the way it should be. The block thinks the UI just shows. Mistake number two, calling block.add inside the belt method. Now, if you're new to Flutter, Here's something important to know. The build method can run over and over again every time the widget needs to update. That includes things like a screen rotation, a set state call, or even just a flutter redrawing for layout changes. So what happens if you trigger an event from inside build? Every time build runs, that event is fired again and again and again. At first, you may notice anything wrong. Your app runs, the data loads, everything looks fine. But keep using it and weird things start happening. You will get duplicate events, unnecessary state changes, performance drops, and even infinite loops. Let me show you an example of what not to do. Looks good, right? But every rebuild means another fetch data call. Not good. Here's the correct approach, use init state which only runs once when we widget is inserted into the widget tree. Now the event fires just once when it's supposed to. Another clear option is to use a block listener. It listens for state changes and triggers logic based on that, all without touching belt method. If you trigger side effects in belt method, you break that separation. You create loops and you lose control over your app's behavior. Keep your build method pure, no logic, no event triggers, just layout. Mistake number three, forgetting to close your block or qubit. When you create a block or qubit manually and you don't close it in dispose, you are leaking memory. Why? Because every block holds a stream and that stream stays alive until you explicitly close it. If you forget, the stream keeps listening even after the widget is gone. That means memory stays allocated, unnecessary events keep processing, and over time your app slows down and even crashes. Let's look at the path code here. This block stays alive forever until the dark garbage collector finally kicks in, maybe. Now, here is the correct way to do it. That one line saves your app from memory leaks, crash, and unpredictable behavior. Here is a pro tip. If you're using block provider and not creating the block manually, this is a good news. So because the block provider will automatically close the block for you when the widget is disposed. So unless you are manually instantiating the block, you don't need to worry. But once you create it by yourself, the responsibility is yours. So here's your takeaway. If you create block manually, always call dot close in dispose. And if you use block provider, it handles that for you. Respect your streams, clean up after yourself, your memory and your users. Well, thank you. Mistake number four is a silent killer for long-term maintainability putting all your app's logic into one giant state class. At first, this might seem like a clever shortcut. You create one app state class, it has everything, oath, card, theme, and sure, it works. But as your app grows, this becomes a problem. 
Suddenly, your widget depends on app state, even though it only care about the cart. You try to write a unit test for just the auth logic, but guess what? You have to mock the entire app state just to test simple login flow. You change the theme, the cart widget rebuilds. Why? Because they all share the same state class. And debugging? It becomes a nightmare. One small state change could trigger a full rebuild, or worse, bugs that are nearly impossible to trace back. Now, let's do it the right way, split by feature. Each piece of your app becomes isolated, testable, and maintainable. This isn't just about the code, it's about the architecture. It's about being able to reason about your app, being able to refactor confidently, being able to test a single feature without dragging the whole app with it. So remember, avoid giant umbrella state, use a small focus qubits or a block for each features, keep your state shallow, specific, and modular. That's how you keep your code clean and maintainable. Mistake number five is the sneaky. It doesn't crash, it doesn't throw errors, but it silently break your UI. It's when you forget to use equitable or set it up wrong. Here is the deal. In a block, the UI only rebuilds when the state changes. But how does Flutter know the state changed? It compares the current state with the previous one. If you didn't extend equitable or forgot to override props list, guess what? Dart thinks both the states are equal, even if they are clearly not. You tap a button, you emit a new state, but the UI nothing happens, and now you are staring at the screen wondering why isn't rebuilding? Because the state comparison failed. This is one line, props, count, that's what makes Flutter says, yep. The states are different, time to rebuild the UI. And if you missed that line, the rebuild never happened even though you emitted a totally a new value. So, here is the checklist. Always extend equitable for your states. Always override the process getter. Always include all fields in the list. That's how you make sure your UI responds correctly to the state changes. It's easy to forget and a pain to debug, so don't skip it. Mistake number six is about crossing the wrong boundary, calling navigator inside your block. It might seem convenient. You finish a login request and just call navigator to push from the block or the repository. But here's the problem. Your block now is tightly coupled to Flutter's UI layer. Why is it bad? Your block now needs a built context and you cannot reuse the block in non-Flutter environments like a test or CLI tools. Your business logic is no longer pure. It has a side effects tied to the UI behavior. This breaks testability and it breaks usability and it violates separation of concerns. So blocks should only manage states, not navigation, not snack bars, not showing dialogues, just a pure predictable state management. So what's the right way? Let's the UI handle navigation by listening for a state that tells it when to act. In this way, your block stays clean and testable and your UI responds reactively to state changes. So remember, never inject belt context into your block. Emit intent state like success or navigate to page. Use block listener or similar logic in the UI to trigger navigation. Mistake number seven is about performance and how avoid unnecessary rebuilds. Nesting multiple block builders for the same block. Let's look at this common pattern. Looks fine, right? But there is a problem. Every time any field in cart state changes, all block builders rebuild. Even if only total changes, item count widget still rebuilds. You ended up rebuilding widgets like you're crazy. Even when you nothing relevant changed. This slows down your UI and wastes precious performance. Now, imagine doing this in a list or a large widget tree. Your app will suffer. So, what's the fix? Use block selector. It lets you extract only the field you care about, and it rebuilds only when that field changes. Now, each widget rebuilds only when its selected field changes. It's faster. 
cleaner and more maintainable. So remember, don't nest block builders unnecessarily. Use a block selector to fine tune rebuilds. Optimize your UI for performance and clarity. Mistake number eight, it sneaks in early, literally when you access to block of context too soon. Let's say you are in init state and you try this. Boom, you hit a runtime error. Block provider of context called with context that doesn't contain a block provider. But why? Isn't the widget already built? Not quite. In its state runs before the widget is fully inserted into the tree. That means context doesn't yet have access to ancestors like your block provider. So how do you fix it? You've got two clean options. The first option is did change dependencies. It runs after the widget is in the tree. So context to tree works fine. The second option is add both frame callback. This does a flutter, hey, run this after the first frame when everything is ready. So remember, don't call read or watch in init state. Use the change dependencies or add both frame callback. Let the widget fully mount before reaching up the tree. Mistake number nine is a classic and it leads to memory leaks, ghost behavior and hard to trace bugs. Forgetting to cancel your stream subscriptions. Here's what looks like. It works at first, but when the block is removed from the widgetry or disposed, that stream is still active. The subscription keeps listening and the block stay alive in memory. You get updates from the block that should be dead. Your app leaks memory, events keep firing and you have no idea why. Here is how you fix it. Always store subscription and cancel it in a close. Now your block cleans up after itself. No ghost updates, no lingering memory. What if you have multiple streams? It's easy, just track them in a list. So remember, store every stream subscription, cancel them in a close, stay leak free and bug free. Mistake number 10, it makes your app harder to test, scale and maintain. It's hard coding dependencies directly into your block. You might see coding like this, looks fine, right? But now your block is locked to that one ABI service implementation. You can't mock it in a test. You can't swap it in a fake, a dev version or an offline version. And any change to ABI service could ripple through your block. This is a tight coupling. It breaks separation of concerns. Here's how you fix it. Now your block doesn't care where the service comes from, it just use it. Your test can pass it in a mock, your app can swap in a different implementation, your code is more maintainable and future proof. A bonus tip, use a dependency injection solution like get it or a provider to manage your service instance at scale. It keeps your block clean and focused just logic and state. Mistake number 11 is a subtle but dangerous mistake and a flutter architecture. Letting your blocks directly depend on each other. At first, it might seem efficient, like block A just calls a method on a block B, right? But now, they are tangled. One change in card block might break checkout block and vice versa. You've created a tight coupling and that leads to fragile spaghetti like architecture. It's a hard to test, hard to debug and hard to scale. So what should you do instead? Keep the blocks decoupled. Let them communicate through events and state. Here's how you do it using block listener. Now cart block doesn't even know checkout block exists. Cart block emit a state. Block listener listen to that state and dispatch it and even to check out block. It's safe and clean and maintainable. Here is a pro tip. If multiple block needs to react to the same data, consider using a shared repository or a reactive stream as centralized source of truth. This pattern keep your app architecture clean with each block owning its own concerns while still collaborating reactably.
We've covered 11 mistakes that can break your blocks and how you fix them all. If this series helped you to level up, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with their friends.